वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑन एन इंट्रोडक्शन टू इंफॉर्मेशन थ्योरी सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट गोसियन चैनल इन द लास्ट क्लास वी टॉक्ट अबाउट एंट्रोपी फॉर कंटिन्यूस रैंडम वेरिएबल वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट चैनल्स कंटिन्यूस वैल्यू चैनल इज दिस गोसियन चैनल एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट कैपेसिटी ऑफ अ गोसियन चैनल विल फर्स्ट टॉक अबाउट capacity for gaussian channel and we are going to prove the achievability of gaussian channel capacity subsequently we are going to show the converse to the coding theorem for gaussian channel and finally in this lecture we are going to talk about band limited gaussian channel and we will compute the capacity of band limited gaussian channel so as i mentioned a gaussian channel is a very important continuous value channel if we write its corresponding corresponding discrete version we can write it let's let's see if the input is xi and noise is additive which is gaussian distributed denoted by zi what we get as output is yi this is a discrete version of a continuous valued gaussian channel so first result that we are going to show you is the capacity of the gaussian channel with power constraint p and noise variance n is given by this expression where the maximum is attained when x is gaussian distributed with zero mean and and variance k now let us first look at what is the capacity if we do not have these constraints power constraints or if we don't do not have noise it's very easy to see if, if the noise is zero then whatever we send will be reliably received so the channel capacity is infinite in that particular case similarly if there is no power constraint we can make our input arbitrarily large such that it is received correctly at the receiver so if we do not have this power constraint then also the capacity of this channel is infinite now let us look at the capacity of this gaussian channel when we do have a power constraint and we do have a noise variance given by n so from the definition of channel capacity it's a maximum mutual information between the input x and the output y and this maximization is taken over all input distribution p of x remember we have a power constraint here it has an average power constraint so expected value of basically of x square is less than p so we need to compute maximum mutual information under all input distribution given this power constraint so from the definition of mutual information we can write mutual information between x and y as differential entropy of y minus differential entropy of y given x now what as i said y is the output of the channel which is nothing but input x plus additive noise additive wide additive gaussian noise which is z so i can write this as differential entropy of y minus differential entropy of x plus z given x now what's the uncertainty or what's, what's entropy of x plus z given x that only depends on z given x so we can write this expression as differential entropy of y minus differential entropy of z given x now z is which is noise is independent of the signal x so the differential entropy of z given x is equal to differential entropy of z because z the noise is independent of the signal x so we can write this mutual information between x and y as 
differential entropy of y minus differential entropy of z. Now, we know that z is Gaussian distributed and if we have a Gaussian distributed random variable, we know what its differential entropy is. So, if we assume that z is Gaussian distributed with some mean let us say 0 and variance n, then the differential entropy of z is given by half log of 2 pi e times n. Now, we can compute the expected value of y square, y is nothing but x plus z. So, this can be written as expected value of x plus z square, which is nothing but expected value of x square plus expected value of z square plus 2 times expected value of x and expected value of z. Now, since the expected value of, of z is 0, this term will be 0. So, what we would get is expected value of y is nothing but expected value of x square plus expected value of z square. Now, expected value of x square is p and expected value of z square is n. So, expected value of y square is p plus n. Now, we have just shown that the mutual information between x and y can be written as differential entropy of y minus differential entropy of z. Now, we know what is the differential entropy of z that is because z is uh, normal distributed with 0 mean and various n. So, the differential entropy of z is given by this. We also know if y is a random variable which has variance p plus n. Then the differential entropy of y is upper bounded by the differential entropy of Gaussian random variable. So, we can upper bound the differential entropy of y by the differential entropy of a Gaussian random variable with same variance and in this case expected value of y square is p plus n. So, we can upper bound this differential entropy of y by differential entropy of a Gaussian random variable with variance given by p plus n. Okay. Now, variance given by p plus 1. So, now basically what we have, so this results follows from a theorem that we have proved for differential entropy that if y is a random variable uh, with variance p plus n, then its differential entropy is upper bounded by differential entropy of a Gaussian random variable with same variance. So, clearly this is equal when y is also Gaussian and y is Gaussian when x is also Gaussian because y is x plus z. We know z is Gaussian distributed. If x is also Gaussian distributed, then y will be sum of two Gaussian distributed random variable will also be a Gaussian distributed. So, in that case y will also be a Gaussian distributed random variable and in that case this would have been equality. So, combining the terms, so this is log a minus log b kind of term which can be combined. So, that becomes this. So, what we have shown is mutual information is upper bounded by half log of 1 plus p times n. Now, remember the maximum is obtained when x is also Gaussian distributed with mean 0 and variance p. In that case, as I said, y is also going to be Gaussian and this inequality would be equality. So, what we have shown is capacity of a Gaussian channel with power constraint p and noise variance n is given by this expression where the maximum is attained when the input x is also Gaussian distributed 
with mean 0 and variance k. Now, we are going to show the achievability of this. So, all as, as long as we choose rate less than this capacity, we are going to get reliable communication. So, let us prove the achievability part of this uh, capacity theorem. So, we are going to use the same ideas that we have used earlier to prove Shannon's noisy channel coding theorem. The difference here is now in that case we had discrete random variables, here we have continuous random variables. This is another difference. Here we also have this average power constraint which we did not have uh, when we prove a Shannon noisy channel coding theorem. So, we are going to use the same ideas as, the, as we have used in proving channel coding theorem for discrete channels and what was those ideas we are going to use random randomly we are going to generate this code word and we are going at the receiver we are going to use typical set decoding. So, we are going to use these ideas of random codes and joint typical decoding. As I said, we are going to take into account that now there is a constraint on uh, power. So, if that is violated, uh, basically uh, that is an error and the variables are now continuous, not discrete. So, that is the difference from the proof that we have done earlier. So, first step is generation of the code book. So, we are going to generate a code book in which all code words are going to satisfy the power constraint. So, to ensure this, we are going to generate code words with each element identically and independently generated according to Gaussian distribution with variance given by p minus epsilon, where p epsilon is a very small positive number. Now, by choosing noise variance p minus epsilon, we are going to ensure that the average power constraint is not violated. So, we can see from law of large numbers, uh, if we generate each code word normal distributed with variance given by p minus epsilon by law of large numbers uh, the average value will basically tend to p minus epsilon and hence the probability that a code word does not satisfy this average power constraint will be small. Let x i w where w are these 2 raised to power n minus n r code words be iid distributed and as we said we are generating these code words with variance given by p minus epsilon. So, let these code words be x n 1, x n 2, x n 2 raised to power n r. So, these are n length code words which are randomly generated with Gaussian distributed with variance p minus epsilon. So, after the generation of the code book, the code book is revealed to both the sender and receiver. Now, if you want to send message w, what the sender does it? It sends the w at code word x and w in the code book. Now, at the decoder, we are going to do typical set decoding. So, how does typical set decoding works? So, we are going to see which code word is jointly typical with the received code book and if there is only one code, code word which is jointly typical with this and there is no other code word which is jointly typical with the received uh, code book, then the decoder will correctly decode, otherwise there is a decoding error. Also, if the power constraint is violated, then also there is an error. So, the receiver is going to look down the list of code words, which are just 
denoted by this x and w and it searches for this one code word which is jointly typical with this received vector y and w it tries to find that one code word which is jointly typical with this received vector now if there is one and only one note this if there is one and only one such code word then the receiver and let's see that code word is x and w then the receiver is going to declare that the transmitted code word was w otherwise the receiver will make an error so if the, is there either more than one code word which is jointly typical with the received sequence or there is no code word which is jointly typical with the received sequence then the decoder will make an error also when power constraint is violated then also receiver will make a error so as i said the receiver also declares an error if the chosen code word does not satisfy this average power constraint now let us compute what is the probability of error so when the decoder is doing joint typical set decoding let us compute what is the probability of error when we are sending this wf code word over this gaussian channel so without loss of generality we will assume let's say the code word 1 was sent so we are going to assume code word 1 was sent without loss of generality then the received code word yn is going to be xn1 plus zn this is the noise this is the code word that was transmitted and this is what we have received now let us define the error events the first error event which i am defining by e0 is the error event corresponding to the violation of average power constraint so e0 is if the average power constraint is violated then the event e0 happens so this corresponds to violation of power constraint the average power constraint that we had let ei be the event where xni and yn belongs to this jointly typical set so ei corresponds to the event when xni and yn are jointly typical so clearly an error happens if event e0 occurs or if e1 complement occurs why because we have sent code word 1 so there will be no error if yn is jointly typical with xn1 however event e1 com uh, complement will occur if x1 xn1 and yn are not jointly typical and that's this event e1 complement so if the transmitted code word and the received sequence are not jointly typical that corresponds to the event e1 complement then also error happens or if any of these events occur e2 e3 e4 e to the power n r that means if any other code word other than the code word number 1 is jointly typical with the received sequence y n then there is an error and that that is denoted by these union of events e2 e3 e4 e to the power n r so this corresponds to a wrong code word which was not sent to be jointly typical with the received sequence so now that we have enumerated the error events let us compute the probability of error given the code word 1 was transmitted 
So, let E denote so even that W hat which is an estimate of the code word that we sent is not same as W and let P be the conditional probability of error given W is 1. So, this is given by probability that event E 0 happens which corresponds to violation of power constraint union with event E 1 complement which is the event that x n 1 and y n are not jointly typical or union with E 2, E 3, E 4, E 2 to the power n r which corresponds to the event that a wrong code word is jointly typical with the receive sequence y n. Now, this can be upper bounded using union bound using union bound we can upper bound this probability of union of these events by. So, we can upper bound this using union bound this is probability of E 0 upper bounded by probability of E 0 plus probability of E 1 complement plus probability of E 2 plus probability of E 3 up to plus probability of E to the power n r fine. Next, now we are going to evaluate these probabilities. Now, first let us look at probability of E naught. Now, remember we were generating these code books with variance P minus epsilon where epsilon is a positive number small number close to 0. So, if we are generating our code books like this by law of large number probability of occurrence of this event E 0 is 0 as n is very large. So, this probability can be upper bounded by a small quantity epsilon. Similarly, let us look at this probability of occurrence of the event that E 1 that x n 1 is not jointly typical with y n. Now, we know from the property of joint A E P which we proved in the last class that probability of this event is also 0 as n goes to infinity. So, this can also be upper bounded by epsilon. So, we have upper bounded this by epsilon and upper bounding this by epsilon. Now, let us look at this error event. Now, since the way we are generating our code books x n 1 and x n i where i is some other code code word they are independent. So, y n and x n i are also going to be independent and we have shown that we have shown a result in the last class that what is the probability that if x n x n i and y n which are chosen independently what is the probability that they will be jointly typical. So, what is the probability that x n i and y n are jointly typical? This we have proved in the last class by the properties of joint A p this is upper bounded by 2 raised to power minus n times mutual information between x and y minus 3 epsilon. So, if we n if we let w to be uniformly distributed over all these 2 raised to power n r code words, then subsequently the probability of error is given by this average probability of error. Now, as we said average probability of error without loss of generality can be written as probability of error given code word 1 was sent using union bound this was upper bounded by some of these error events. We have already shown this is upper bounded by epsilon, this is upper bounded by epsilon and this is upper bounded by 
this quantity. This follows from the properties of joint AEP which we have proved in the last class. So, then this term does not depend on i. So, I can sum over all i's going from 2 to 2 to the power n r. So, I get this epsilon epsilon will be 2 epsilon and this summation over i from 2 to 2 raise to power n r this will be this term and then we have this one which is this. Now, combining the terms containing n I get this this can be written as 2 raise to power 3 n epsilon into 2 raise to power minus n neutral information minus r and this quantity if we choose our r to be less than mutual information between x and y minus 3 epsilon see this term we can write as 2 raise to power minus n mutual information between x and y minus r minus 3 epsilon you can write it this way see if we choose our r to be less than mutual information between x and y minus 3 epsilon then this term will be positive and so for large n this will also go to 0. So, this whole term can be upper bounded by epsilon. So, in other words this probability of error can then be upper bounded by 3 epsilon provided my rate is less than mutual information between x and y minus 3 epsilon. So, this shows that there exist good codes with rate given by this and in those case the probability of error will go towards 0 as n goes to infinity. Now, if we delete half of this worst code words, we obtain a code with low maximal probability of error. In particular, the power constraint will be satisfied by these remaining code words because we are already throwing off these so called worst code words. And hence, we have constructed a code that achieves a rate arbitrarily close to capacity and gives probability of error which is which goes probability of error which goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, this proves the achievability of Gaussian channel capacity. Next, we are going to show the converse of the channel coding theorem for Gaussian channel. So, we are going to show that we prove that the channel capacity of Gaussian channel is given by this and we prove that rate greater than capacity is not achievable or we are going to show that if probability of error goes to 0 then the rate is less than channel capacity. Now, the converse proof is very similar to the proof for discrete channel there is one additional constraint that we have here now which is the average power constraint. So, we are going to show you now that this probability of error goes to 0 for a sequence of code given by these parameters for a Gaussian channel with power constraint p as long as rate is less than capacity which is given by this expression. So, we are considering a 2 raise to power n r comma n code which satisfies 
average power constraint which is given by this expression and this is satisfied by all code words w going from 1 to 2 raise to power n r let w be uniformly distributed now this uniform distribution over this index set induces a distribution on input code words which in, in turn induces a distribution on the input alphabet and we can show that w x and w y n and w hat they form a markov chain so w is my code word index x n is my encoder uh, encoded uh, the code book y n is a received code book and w hat is an estimate of w based on what i receive which is y n now we are going to take help of fano's lemma to relate probability of error and to mutual information now we in the class have used this version of fano's lemma which was given by but we did h of p e plus p e log of l minus 1 we we use this version and we we said this can be weakened because binary entropy function is less than equal to 1 so this can be weakened as 1 and this can be we further weakened as p log of all the possibilities l so number of code words here is 2 raise to power n r so if we take log of that this will become less than equal to 1 plus n times r and probability of error so this is a version that we are using uncertainty in w given w hat is upper bounded by 1 plus n r times probability of error and as we said uh, here we are going to show that if probability of error goes to 0 for large n then the rate has to be less than c so this is you know so uncertainty in w given w hat is less than equal to n times so small value epsilon where epsilon goes to 0 and probability of error goes to 0 now w is uniformly distributed over this index set 1 to 2 raise to power n r so uncertainty in w is given by log of 2 raise to power n r which is nothing but n r now from the definition of mutual information we can write uncertainty in w in terms of mutual information between w and w hat plus conditional entropy of w given w hat now if probability of error goes to 0 as n goes to infinity we have shown that this term is upper bounded by n times some epsilon so i can write then uncertainty in w is upper bounded by mutual information between w and w hat plus n times epsilon now we just saw in the last slide that w x and w y n and w hat they form a markov chain so then from data processing lemma we know that mutual information between w and w hat is going to be less than mutual information between x and w and y n so this follows from the data processing lemma so then we can write this that the mutual information between w and w hat is 
less than equal to mutual information between xn and yn. So that's what we are writing here and this comes as n times epsilon n. Now following the definition of mutual information, we can write the mutual information between xn and yn as differential entropy of yn minus differential entropy of yn given xn and this is n times epsilon. Now what is yn? yn is the output of the Gaussian channel which is xn plus zn where zn is the Gaussian noise with 0 mean and variance n. Now uncertainty in yn differential entropy of yn given xn can be written as differential entropy of xn plus zn given xn and this is nothing but uncertainty in zn given xn. Now note that the noise zn and the signal xn are independent and hence this can be written as uncertainty in uh, differential entropy of z of n. So, I can write differential entropy of y n given x n as differential entropy of z n. Next. So, what we have shown so far is n r is actually less than equal to h of y n minus differential entropy of z n plus n times epsilon. Now, this can be upper bounded by this. Again, this is straightforward to prove. We have proved this using chain rule. We can write h of y n in terms of y1, y2, y3, yn condition on uh, these yis and we know that conditioning cannot increase entropy. So, from that we get this result. Similarly, we can write h of zn as less than equal to summation over i from 1 to n h of zi. So, this is what we are writing here plus n times epsilon n. This is this term here. Now, we have just shown h of z i is same as h of z i given x i and this is same as h of x i plus z i given x i which is same as h of y i given x i. Okay. So, this is differential entropy of y i, this is differential entropy of y i given x i. So, then this can be written as mutual information between x i and y i. So, from this result and this result, we can write n r is upper bounded by summation of mutual information between x i and y i where the summation is over i going from 1 to n plus n times epsilon. Now, let x i be w i w where x i w where w is drawn uniformly over this index set and let p i be the average power of the ith column of this code book. We know that x i the signal and z i the noise they are independent. So, the average power of the received sequence y i can be written as p i plus n where p i is the power of x i n is the noise variance. Now, again this result we have proved in the previous class that if y 
has uh, y i's I have the same second order moment. Uh, the Gaussian random variable will have the maximum differential entropy. So, h of y i is upper bounded by the differential entropy of an equivalent uh, of the differential entropy of a Gaussian random variable with same variance. So, basically h of y i is upper bounded by half log of 2 pi e times p i plus n. So, the differential entry entropy of y i is upper bounded by the differential entropy of a Gaussian random variable which which has 0 mean and variance given by p i plus n. Actually mean can be anything because uh, translation does not change the differential entropy. Okay. Now, continuing with the inequalities that we had, we just had the expression that n of r is upper bounded by summation over all i's from 1 to n h of y i minus h of z i. Now, we just have now showed you that differential entropy of y i is upper bounded by this quantity and since z i is Gaussian distributed with variance n, its differential entropy is given by this expression. So, now combining these two log terms, this term and this term, we get this expression that n r is upper bounded by summation from i goes to 1 to n half log of 1 plus p i divided by n plus n times epsilon. Now, the way we generated these code books, code words, they all satisfied average power constraint. So, they all satisfied power constraint because we were we were generating this code word with variance given by p minus epsilon. So, these code words were satisfying power constraint. So, that average is also going to satisfy the power constraint. Now, we know that log is a concave function and if a function is concave, we know from Jensen's inequality that expected value of the function is less than equal to function of expected value. So, this is what we know from Jensen's inequality if f of x is a concave function. In this case log is a concave function of x. So, then here we have this expression that n r is less than equal to summation over all i's 1 half log of 1 plus p i n plus n times epsilon n. Now, if I divide this by n, what I would get is this will go away, this will go away and I will have here 1 by n. So, I have I have this expression r is less than equal to 1 by n summation this term plus epsilon. Now, I know that log 1 plus x is a concave function of x. So, then expected value of the log function will be upper bounded by log of expected value of x. So, that is what we are doing here. So, this is expected value of the log function. This is from Jensen's inequality upper bounded by function, function is log of the expected value. All right. Now, this 1 by n summation p i is nothing but average power constraint. So, what we have shown here now is that r is less than equal to 1 half log 
वन प्लस पी बाई एन प्लस एप्सलॉन सो वॉट वी हैव शोन इज इस प्रॉबलिटी ऑफ एरर गोज टू जीरो देन आर इज ऑल्सो लेस देन चैनल कैपेसिटी सो आर इज लेस देन चैनल कैपेसिटी इफ प्रॉबलिटी ऑफ एरर गोज टू जीरो एस एन गोज टू इंफिनिटी सो दिस प्रूव द कन्वर्स ऑफ द चैनल कोडिंग थियोरम फॉर गोसियन चैनल नेक्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वॉट इज द कैपेसिटी ऑफ अ गोसियन चैनल इफ द गोसियन चैनल इज बैंड लिमिटेड टू डब्ल्यू हट्स एंड द नॉइस पास फॉर द डेंसिटी इज गिवन बाई एंड नॉट बाई टू सो वी आर गोइंग टू शो यू दैट if the gaussian channel is band limited to w hertz and its noise path vector density is given by n not by 2 then the capacity of this band limited gaussian channel is given by w log of 1 plus p divided by n not w this is the capacity of the band limited gaussian channel and if we let w go to infinity then the capacity is given by this expression so let us prove this so if the channel is band limited to w then we can sample the signal at rate 1 by 2 w and that would be sufficient to reconstruct the signals from the samples this follows from the nyquist criteria now if the noise has pass spectral density given by n not by 2 and the bandwidth is w then the noise power is given by n not by 2 times 2w so you have basically noise pass spectral density given by n not by 2 and you have bandwidth of w to w so this noise power is given by n not by 2 into 2 times w which is n not w and over a period from 0 to t you have so many noise samples because you are sampling at rate 1 by 2 w so each of this 2 w t noise samples in time t will have variance given by n not w times t divided by 2 w t which is nothing but n not by 2 now let us use the channel over time 0 to t so power per sample would be p times t divided by total samples which is 2 wt and that comes out to be p divided by 2 times w so similarly we can compute noise variance per sample just n not into 2 wt divided by 2 wt which is n not by 2 so capacity per sample is given by half log 1 plus power per sample this is noise per sample if you go back here noise variance per sample is n not by 2 and power per sample is given by p by 2 w so then the capacity is given by half log of 1 plus p by 2 w divided by n not by 2 and this is nothing but half log of 1 plus p divided by n not w now this is capacity per samples and how many samples we have per second we have 2 w samples per second so then the capacity is given by W log of one plus p divided by n not w bits per second. The signal power this is the noise power, and we can similarly compute if we let w go to infinity and take the limit, the capacity comes out to be this expression p times p divided by n not into log of e. bits per second 
So, this is the expression for capacity for band limited Gaussian channel. So, with this we will conclude our discussion on Gaussian channel. In the next lecture we will talk about parallel Gaussian channel. Thank you.